what we seek to do as educators is to provide a space where that emerging, that awakening can happen, a place where students can learn to develop their voice, a place where we can rehearse what it means to have courage and to step up and to step out and to use our voice. You know, I often think of those of us who are in education as purveyors of hope and purveyors of action. And that's what we seek to do each day on our campus. Talk to me a little bit about the role or the obligation, the importance of the liberal arts and the type of education Mm. we provide as it relates to restorative justice, to social justice, Mm. to equity and social change. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that our democracy will not survive without robust liberal arts education, that it is one of the main pillars of a successful, thriving, multiracial, multi-ethnic, multi-gender, multi-class, multi-faith democracy. Um, At its best, liberal arts education can help us to learn more about our past and our present so that we can respond to our present moment with wise action Mm -hmm. and greater care and concern for our fellow humans and this fragile planet we share. And so it can feel overwhelming and we can wonder, what's my role? How can I possibly do anything as a single individual? But I think what's important is for us to pause, Mm -hmm. not just react and leap at every opportunity to get involved and not just go crazy on social media, ranting about this or ranting about that, but to really pause and to reflect and ask yourself, how can I be of greatest service in this time? Mm -hmm. And each of us have skills, have talents, have passions, have interests, whether you're an artist Mm -hmm. or someone who is good at rallying people and getting them to listen, someone who's good at organizing, someone who's good at teaching, someone, everyone has some kind of skill. You might have the skill of deep listening, right? We all have some kind of skill that can be of service in this moment. The majority of women um, who are arrested in the United States are mothers. Um, are the primary caretakers, often of young children. And so when they are arrested, um, the entire fabric of that family, um, often the extended family and the community is, is damaged, sometimes irreparably. And when women are released from prison, um, they often, their first task, when they walk out those those jailhouse doors or leave the prison walls is trying to reunite with their children, regain custody. And, you know, not much, you know, in the public discourse has been about the fact that women often lose custody permanently of their children because they were arrested and convicted of some relatively minor offense. And what punishment kind of punishment is that? Not just of women, but of their children to lose your children because you are locked up over some drug offense, some property crime, crimes often of poverty, to come out and find yourself struggling to regain custody of your children. And in most states, there's an uphill battle for women because what are the custody, what are the you know, indicators or the uh, guidelines used to determine whether um, you know, custody will be granted? Well, you have to show that uh, you have a job yeah. and you have a stable uh, mm-hmm. home um, that you're able to provide food and shelter um, and, you know, uh, economic stability. And yet those are the very things that, you know, people returning home from prison can be legally denied. I don't want to paint a false narrative of triumph and inevitable progress. Mm-hmm. because that's not the truth. Mm-hmm. We do not know what will happen. We do not know um, whether the arc of history is going to bend towards justice in the near future. Um, we don't know that. We don't know what's going to happen in their lifetimes. The importance of 
trying to talk honestly with our kids about the difficulties that are quite certain <laughs> um, without painting a, a false picture that everything's going to be all right. You know, it's been hard before. It's hard now. It's, yeah. We just keep fighting and it's all going to be okay. Um, it may not be okay. What if? Mm-hmm. What if racism is permanent? Am I still willing to show up with courage? Mm-hmm. Am I still willing to uh, act with joy and treasure the beauty in our lives? Um, am I still willing to love open heartedly? Um, am I still willing to fight for justice? And the answer is yes. I don't need to know that it's all going to work out in the end um, in order to commit my life to movements for justice and to acting in solidarity for people and communities in the United States and all over the world who are part of liberation struggles and liberation movements. Um, And so I think for me, it's, it's about talking about what it means to live a meaningful life. And um, I think living a meaningful life means standing for justice, even when you don't know if you will win now or ever. Mm -hmm. Um, It means acting with courage and compassion. It means deepening your understanding of your own history and that of others. Um, And um, yeah, living out loud and, and, creating space for a lot of love and joy and laughter and music and dance and art along the way. Um, Because we don't know how this will end. All we can do is to show up um, to the best of our ability and um, kind of offer our own voice and our own steps and our own actions kind of as a, a prayer for a new America, a new world in which we learn how to be in right relationship with each other and this planet we share. That's all we can do.